All right, welcome everyone. All right, you're the dedicated students, right? The ones who fought through the rain and you swam here. You had to swim to come to class today and I appreciate that. Yeah. Should I? Okay. I have a special, I have a special grade book that I don't, I don't show any students, but I'll put all of your names down in that special grade book. It's the bonus points in that one. Okay. The first thing to remember is the research paper is due by 5 p.m. So if I had made the deadline 12 p.m., you'd already be done, but we have to drag it out. So you have uh, five more hours to finish that. Um, I, I looked and uh, one student had submitted it last night, but as of last time I checked, there was only one. So I guess you're still working on it. Homework number 10 is due on Sunday, and uh, the hardest problem on that assignment, we're going to do an in-class exercise today that shows you how to solve the flow equalization problem. So you're going to really, um, being here is going to pay for itself when you learn how to solve that problem so much more easily than if you had to figure it out from the textbook. Because, you know, the textbook has an example that shows, but it's not as easy to follow as what we'll go through today. After we do flow equalization basins, we're going to talk a little bit about primary treatment. All right. Um, flow equalization basins aren't at every treatment plant. They're usually put into place when there's a huge variation in the flow rates between the daytime and the nighttime. And the reason why is that flow equalization basins are meant to smooth out the BOD loading and the flow loading because the bacteria are going to uh, require steady state conditions. So look at this figure that shows how the flow rate goes low at night and high in the afternoon. And what we can do is calculate the average daily flow, and with an, an equalization basin, we're trying to compress that curve. We're trying to make that curve closer to the average so that there's less extreme changes in flow rate during the day. So they call that dampening. We want to dampen the variations. Yeah. Well, when we go through the procedure today, we're going to add a safety factor to make the flow equalization bigger than, than the figure shows. But what you need to do is definitely design the basin for what you consider your maximum condition. When you first build a, a sewer treatment plant, there's relatively few people who are using it because you build a treatment plant maybe to serve a 30-year design life. So when you size each component, you need to be thinking not how much demand would there be at the beginning of the design life, but you need to think how many people are going to be using this facility at the end when the city has grown and there's more neighborhoods and more population. So you raise a good point. It's important to size them with future demands in mind. So what we're going to do today is start with a curve of flow data and also some BOD concentrations and we're going to try and smooth those out by constructing a flow equalization basin. This is the data and what I've done is I've actually put a spreadsheet file on uh, iLearn so you should log into iLearn right now and look for the announcement that has an Excel file attached to it. There's an announcement there and so that you don't have to type in all this data. It would just be a waste of time for you to uh, type all the flow data yourself. If you log into iLearn, the announcement that I'm talking about, let's see, it's called the ICE 26 starting point file. And so you can click on the uh, course link to it and then automatically download the file to whatever your, maybe your U drive would be a good spot for that. You're going to want to save this file that we create today. It'll be very valuable to you for the homework. If you don't save the file and you have to start over from scratch, you're going to be very disappointed. So be sure to save it someplace that you'll be able to come back to. All right. I'm just going to circulate around and make sure everyone has that same file. We'll all start with the same thing. And I'm going to dim the lights here in front just to make it a little bit easier. Um, I should have suggested that you sit as close to the front as possible because those of you sitting in the very back are going to have a hard time seeing. 
this isn't the finest projector on campus. You'll want to enable editing as well once you do download the file. So this is what we're starting with. Got the file. Oh, good. You guys are quick. I like it. Okay. Got it? Okay. So this is flow rate as a function of time, and we also have BOD concentration. And what we notice is in the middle of the night, the flow rates are low. Why? Everyone's asleep. No one's flushing the toilet. Okay? So there's less flow coming to the treatment plant. Also, we notice that the BOD concentration is low. Why do you think that the concentration or the strength of the waste is going lower at night? Okay. Yeah, you think about what, what's getting into the sewer in the middle of the night is probably some rainwater or if the pipe is cracked and there's groundwater seeping into the pipes. And so the concentration of actual BOD is going to be lower in the middle of the night than it is during the peak times when at 7 p.m. that's when everyone's throwing their food down the garbage disposal and all the leftover scraps of food. And so the BOD is very high because there's more orga organic waste at night. The first thing we're going to do, let's see, the in-class exercise. All right. Um, step A is we want to determine the average daily flow. So scroll to the bottom of that, and just you can type in AVG just to abbreviate average. And then the formula that you should use just equals average and then you highlight the range of cells that we want to get the average for. So if you use the cursors, you just start selecting and you can press the shift button or you can use your mouse and highlight. Okay, so we want to highlight all of the flow in values and the average flow rate in is 0.27 cubic meters per second. All right. So does everyone have that average flow in? 270. 270. Well, I mean, I've got the uh, number formatting. If you, depending on how many digits you show, it might be 0 0.27042, et cetera. OK? So that's the average flow rate. OK, so you can fill in the blank on there, uh, the average daily flow rate. What we're going to assume is whatever the aver average flowing coming in that will be the flow rate out of our flow equalization basin. So the purpose of that is we want to make sure that the equalization... Will you guys close the door, please? We want to make sure that there's a steady flow rate of water going to our treatment plant. Now examine the data. And you know the flow rate out. And you have here all of the information for the flow rate in. In the evening, Still working on average? 0 0.270. Yeah. All right. Got the average? OK. So during the evening, when is this tank going to start to fill up? And remember, mass balance tells us that accumulation is in minus out. Accumulation is in minus out. So we know that the flow rate out is always 0 0.270, etc. Look in the evening. At what time does the flow rate in get larger than the flow rate out? Um, so when is there going to be? All right, yeah. So we, we look at it, okay, at 6 a.m. there's more that is going to be going out, 7, still more, okay, 11 a.m. is the first hour when we have more flow coming into the tank than is going out. So what happens at 11 a.m.? <laughs> 
Well, it's just, that's when the tank starts to fill up. The tank used to be emptying, and so now at 11 a.m., the tank starts to fill, because in is greater than out. So let me write that on the board. If, if in is bigger than out, the tank will fill. It'll start to accumulate liquid. The flow rate out is the average flow. So the, the point two seven zero, that's our out. So here's what we have to do. We're going to reorganize the data. Let me zoom out so that we can see all of the data all at once. Okay. We want to put 11 a.m. at the top of the list. So watch what I do. I'm going to start selecting here. I'm going to highlight everything. Oop, not that. Okay, I'm going to highlight everything until 11 a.m. like this. Okay, so highlight midnight through 10 a.m. And we're going to move it out of the way, just sideways for a moment. Okay, and now I'm going to move this data to the top. And then I'm going to move this data down below again. What's that? We're going to look at just after the nighttime period finishes, when does the tank start to fill in the morning? But you've got a good point. That's not the only time that the flow rate is going to be positive. Okay, so does now everybody have 11 a.m. at the top, and it should still be in sequential order? Organize it so you rearrange the data so you have an 11 a.m. at the top, and it's still in hour-by-hour hour order, and that will have 10 a.m. at the bottom. So let me just undo that to illustrate. I mean, there's several ways to do it. You could insert rows. You could right-click, insert, insert, okay? That would be a little bit tedious because you're going to have to insert so many rows. Okay, so we've got some space now and we want to have at the top should be our 11 a.m. data. So I'm going to copy it with control X and then I'm going to paste it with control V and then I'll eliminate these extra rows here so that it's continuous. All right. All right, so what we should have now is the data in order and um, we're going to add some additional columns to the top here. And if, if it's not enough space, um, highlight all of these and do wrap text. So click on wrap text. And that will make it so that the typing continues. And we can also make some of these columns a little bit wider by highlighting them and then dragging the width sideways. All right. Now, if you fall behind, remember that the video is, um, um, is recorded, so you can always go through this again after the lecture. Okay, we're going to add these new columns. On the paper, it tells you to add um, the following titles. One is volume in during hour, and that's going to be cubic meters. Then do flow out cubic meters per second, volume out during hour, cubic meters, accumulation during hour, and that's cubic meters, overall cumulative volume in cubic meters. So put those titles in there. 
I'm going to make it bold and center it just for fun. You don't have to. It doesn't change the numbers, but we need to have accurate descriptions in there. All right, and I'm also going to insert a row here. So if you don't know how to insert a row, watch this. You highlight the row, right click, and insert. Because I'm going to want to label these so that I can give you an idea of what the formulas are. I'm going to label them A, B, C, and so on. Let's see if it'll automatically continue the labeling here. No, it doesn't know. That's all right. So once we get the uh, titles on those columns, we're going to start going through and filling in the calculations. Got it? Yeah, it's wet out there. All right. Column titles, we're getting it there. Mm -hmm. No. Uh huh. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pause the recording for just a moment, let you guys catch up. Okay. So, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to type the equation that we'll use for each column in row one, and that'll give you an idea of what functions you need to do. So this column D, to find the volume that flows in to the tank during the hour, it's simply going to be um, column B times 3,600, because there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. So this is the flow rate in. If that's cubic meters per second, during the one hour period from 11 a.m. until noon, there's 3,600 seconds. And so the total amount of water that came in during that hour is this times 3,600. All right? So it should be 1,008. And now you have to type that formula uh, 23 more times, right? No, of course not. Thanks to Excel, all we have to do is you can click and drag, or even better, just double click on the tiny green box there, and it'll fill the formula through downward as long as there's data. So double click and there it goes. Okay? Yep. The formula is, so see at the top row one where it says D equals B times 3600? So it's column B, which is the flow rate in, times 3600. So I'll highlight the cell there. Uh, it's so small, I can't imagine you can see it. Flow rate in times 3,600. So that tells us during that one hour increment, if the flow rate stays the same over the increment, how much water comes into the tank. We're going to be comparing the flow in versus the flow out, and that'll tell us how deep the tank is getting every hour. So that's the direction we're headed in. Any questions before we move on to column E? Uh, remember we have our average flow rate. If that got messed up from reorganizing the data, calculate that again. So equals average. And we need to have that average flow rate because we're going to use it in our calculations. So there it is, 0.27041667. All right. Oh. Forget about that one. All right. What? Uh, it doesn't matter how many are displayed because we're going to refer to the cell precisely. We're not going to type it in. Okay, so flow out equals and then click on the location where you have that average calculated. Click on the average and then anchor it by pressing the F4 button on your keyboard. So F4 will put in the dollar signs. That means once we drag it down, it's always looking in the same spot. 
Okay. So I'm going to double click in the corner here just to fill that through all the times. Okay. We don't assume that the flow rate out is the same. We control it. We have a valve on the downstream end of this tank, and we're the ones deciding what the flow rate out is. And the reason why we picked the average flow rate out is because if we have less than that, then water will keep accumulating in the tank, and it'll overflow. Nope. No, because if we did the highest one, then nothing would be stored in the tank. It wouldn't do its job. Okay, so equals flow rate in times 3,600, just like that. Yep. And you have to, yeah, there. You just double click. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh-huh. Okay, the flow rate out, just it's equals to the average. So equals and click there, except for that's going to need to be fixed. So, and click there. Uh-huh, enter. Okay, but you need to fix that formula. If click on it, uh, see it's only considering some of the data. So click on that edge and drag it down to take the rest. Corner. Mm -hmm. Oh, you almost had it. Yep. There you go. Enter. All right. And now double click that down through the bottom. Escape. Just double click. Okay. All right. Let me make a point. A spreadsheet sometimes is very visually distracting if it has too many numbers showing. So I'm going to reduce the number of digits that are shown like this. Because I just, I don't want to see all that extra nonsense. And so the numbers are still there. All the precision is built into the spreadsheet. I just don't want to see it on the page. So I use this number decrease. Okay, so column E, the formula we're going to put there is it's just the, uh, Average in. That's the average daily flow coming in. And that's what we're designing our tank to have the flow rate going out. Okay, so column F is going to be E times 3,600. This was a flow rate and this will be an amount. That's how much comes out of the tank during one hour period. So the flow rate out times 3,600. And you can double click and it will have that amount. And it should be the same amount every time because we want to have a steady flow rate going out of our tank. the reference. Put in the dollar signs. Oh, okay. F4. All right. Now enter. And now you can double click. Yep. All right. Column G. I see some of you are ready for the next thing. The accumulation during the hour, it's going to be the in minus the out. Yep. D minus F. Right. So it's the difference. It's equals flow in minus the flow out. So in the first hour, if you look at the difference between how much is coming in and how much is coming out, there's more, there's 34.5 cubic meters of water going in more than we're allowing to flow out. And so that gets stored inside of the tank. That extra flow gets stored. So I can double click and it calculates for every hour the difference between the in and the out. And you'll notice that there's a certain time where there's more flow out than there is flow in. In the middle of the night, instead of having a really low flow rate going to our treatment plant, we'll use the water from this tank so that we have a steady flow always going to the treatment plant. 
So that's the difference for the accumulation. Okay. Yes. Yeah, but you did you type in two seven zero here? Yeah, don't do that. Do equals and click here so that you get all of the precision. Click there and then, yep, and wait, you need to anchor it. Go here, press F4, oops, click, o click out. Yeah, put in the dollar sign so that when you drag it down, it's always uh, looking in the same spot. All right. Mm-hmm. The flow out should always be the same. It should always be this. So we're deciding that the flow rate out is always that amount. So click in here, click there, anchor it, and drag down. So overall cumulative volume is, this is a little bit tricky, so be sure to watch this. It is, the first one is just how much accumulated during that hour. Okay. The next one, the, the overall cumulative volume, that's saying how much water is in the tank at a certain time. In the first hour, that was the first time the tank starts to fill, and so it's only 34.5. The next one, here's the magical thing, equals the cell above it plus however much came in during that hour. So I'm going to leave that on screen for just a second so you can see it's the, uh, the cumulative amount from the previous hour and then the accumulation during that hour. Okay? Yeah, let me write the uh, formula for H. What I'm going to call it is H is G plus H previous. That means the previous value that you had in H for the previous hour. Okay, so it's the first one, there isn't a previous H, so it's just G. But the next one for row two, it's going to be the previous H value plus how much came in during that one hour. And so I'll double click to carry that through and the amounts get filled in. And if things worked out, we should see that this tank goes to zero at the end. So it gets really close to zero. If we show the precision here, turn it in number, there we go. It goes to zero in the end. So that, that's, that tells you your solution is right. If it goes down to zero as the last value, that means the tank in the morning starts to fill up, and all night long, the tank is filling and filling, and then it starts to drain when the flow rate in is lower than the flow rate out, and by the end of the cycle, it goes to a, uh, a flow volume of zero. So this tells us the sizing, right? The next step has to do with the BOD concentration that's in there. So we have to put in some more column titles. Uh, the next column titles we're going to put in for uh, I, J, and K, we're going to have mass of BOD 5 in during the hour and that is going to be kilograms. Then we're going to have concentration of BOD5 in the basin, and that will be grams per cubic meter. And then finally, mass of BOD5 out during, mass of BOD5 out during the hour, and that's kilograms. Is 
Yeah, how big does the basin need to be? We need to pick the largest of those values. So you find where is the biggest one? 4,304. And then multiply it by 1.25. The 1.25 is our safety factor. So we build it 25% larger than is absolutely required. Because if we only built it this size, then at night the water comes literally to the top of the tank. And that makes us nervous. So we'll make it just a little bit taller so it doesn't come all the way to the top of the tank. But the largest of the accumulated volumes is the size that we designed for. So that's the required size. Back to these column titles here. Okay. I wish they had a bigger projector for in here. You need a telescope by the end of the, the back of the room. Bring binoculars next time you come to class when we're in here. That's when it's the fullest, yep. Yeah. Right. H. Okay, for the first one, it's just this. And then for the previous ones, it's the one above it plus the one to the side. And then you can drag that down through. All right. So let's look at the formulas for these last three columns, and then that concludes the, de the design example. Okay, column I, we're going to do C times D divided by 1,000. So that will be the concentration. Let's go over here. Concentration times the volume in divided by a thousand and that makes it kilograms because it was in grams so there's hundred and eighty six cubic me uh, hundred eighty six kilograms of BOD that comes into the tank during that one hour period and okay, click and drag that down through for yeah, so this, this largest one down here that you found, you'd actually build it 1.25 times larger. You can use the max function, yes. Um, add those next column titles. Yeah, okay. So what we're doing now is we're going to answer the second part of the question because the in-class exercise asks, how big should the tank be? But we also want to know what is it doing to the flow rate and what is it doing to the, uh, to the concentration of BOD that's coming to the treatment plant. And we're going to illustrate the dampening effect that it has. Okay, column J is the hardest one. So you're really going to need to focus for this one. All right. The uh, formula that I'm going to write for it is C times D plus J previous times H previous divided by D plus H previous. Well, let me make that column wider so you can see the whole formula for it. So what it means is the first one there is no previous. So the first one, the concentration of BOD in the basin is just whatever the concentration flowing in was. So the first one is the 185. That's the concentration of BOD inside the basin. But after that, think about what's happening. You've got a tank full of some water that's at 185, and then you have some more flow coming in, and the flow that's coming in is at 190. So we're doing an average. This column is averaging the strength of the waste that came in with the concentration of BOD that was already in the tank. So that's what this weird formula is that I just put in is it's a weighted average. So in the denominator there are the two water amounts, the amount that was in the tank before the hour 
and the amount of water that's coming into the tank during that hour. And then in the numerator is the concentration times the amount of the uh, inflowing water and the concentration times amount of the water that was in the tank before. So let me do it on the second row here. Equals parentheses, and we want the value for C. Column C is, yeah, we're not going to type it in. I need to do the cell location so that I can apply the formula everywhere. 190 times the uh, D, which is this one, the volume in, plus, now the J previous, here is the previous J, it's the one above it, times the previous H, which is here, so that's how much water was in the tank before that hour. Okay, close parentheses, and then divided by D, got to go back over here to get that amount, plus H previous. And here is the H previous. All right. Let me scroll over sideways. Yeah, I won't. Well, let me press enter just to make sure it's the right number, then I'll come back to it. Yeah, that's right. 189 is what you should be looking for. How? This one? Mm. I don't want to waste a bunch of time with a tool I don't know how to use. I'd probably just screw it up. The formula is here at the top. Yeah. I can see it from here. You guys need glasses if you can't see it. I mean, that top formula there? Let me zoom in a bit more, but... because you're using the previous one. You're doing it, it's the, uh, the one that was above it. It's the one that was above it. Previous means the row above the one that you're on. Okay, here's the previous J. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So C times D. No, I mean this is H. G plus. Oh, you're doing that one. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it would be this one this? plus okay. that one. Enter. And now you can drag that all the way down. Well, in the corner. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe you can show me after class, but I'm not sure it's that easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so once you get the formula typed in, I'm going to decrease the digits that are shown. Remember, there's that visual distraction. We want to, uh, there's enough going on that we don't need to see a thousand units of precision there. So I'll double click to fill it through. Now look at that. The concentration of uh, BOD is sort of dampened. The concentration of BOD coming in is a lot different than the concentration going out. And that's good because the BOD, uh, the the microorganisms need a more steady concentration. They don't like huge food and then a little bit of food. They want it to be more steady. And so we've dampened it a lot. The last, col uh, the last column here for K is going to be F times J divided by 1,000. Okay, equals F times J divided by 1,000. And what that tells you is 
how much BOD came out during that hour, the mass of BOD going out. And this is probably where it shows the importance of the flow equalization base in the best, is we want to give the same mass of food to those microorganisms every hour if we can. Now this isn't going to give them the same mass, but it really is reducing the, uh, the variability. Look, before we had the flow equalization, there's 300. The peak is going up to 300, and then at night, there's some times when they're getting only 24. So the microorganisms are not going to handle that well to one hour only have 24 kilograms of food, and then the next hour, some, some other hour of the day, have 340. The flow equalization basin smooths it out a lot. Um, let me show you a graph of the, uh, of the performance. Uh, that's not going to work. That's not it. All right, let's graph it from scratch. Boy, we burned through an hour, didn't we? We'll pick up on primary treatment next time. Let me just graph this to show you what it's doing. All right, I'm going to insert a table. I, I'm sorry, a figure. I'll make it one of the smooth ones. Of course, like usual, Excel does a bad job of guessing what I want to be graphed. So let me go in here and uh, delete all of its lousy guesses. All right, so the data that I want to graph is I want to have uh, time on the x-axis. So here is time. And then on the vertical axis, I want to show the mass of BOD that's coming in during that hour. And this is going to show us why we need the flow equalization basin, because look at those huge swings in, uh, in concentration. So that's, that's not good. The, the bugs are going to be starving at night and have too much food during the day. So let me add another series to that and take a look at the outflow. So I'm going to select the time for the horizontal axis and then the mass out for the vertical axis. And voila. All right, let's zoom in on that and take a look at what it's showing. The blue line shows how much BOD is coming into the tank, the mass of BOD coming into the tank every hour. And the red line is showing the mass of BOD going out of the tank every hour. And the whole objective of this process was to dampen variations was to try and smooth out those huge peaks and so that now the bacteria are going to have a much easy, easier time surviving and their performance will be a lot better because uh, we've achieved much closer to steady flow conditions. The blue line, the first thing I graphed is the BOD in, the mass of BOD in. And the red line is the mass of BOD out. Okay. All right, so we didn't get to primary treatment for today. That's all right. We'll get to it when we uh, have class on Sunday of next week. Remember, you have a homework assignment due on Sunday, and this flow equalization basin stuff is having to do with that homework. So this video will be online if you fell behind at one point or if you just want a refresher on how it all works. But I'd encourage you, save your file so you can come back to it and look and see what you did. It'll make things a little bit easier when you're working on the assignment. All right, on your way out, please put the in-class exercise with your name on it.
on the chair. And I will see you on Sunday.